What's going on? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Did you really think we were going to leave you hanging without an episode because of Thanksgiving? It's a short week, but come on, let's get to it. All right, Time Magazine named the iPhone 10 one of their best 25 inventions of 2017. And yeah, I know some of you are like, really? Time? Now, let's just not make this a two hour debate about if it really is or not, but let's say Apple, okay, you put a lot of the pieces together, even though an OLED screen and face recognition and a buggy iOS have been done before, but Apple is doing it differently. Wait, I know, it had to be because of an emojis. I knew it. Now, some of the other top 25 inventions, what about the eSight 3? Glasses that help give sight to the blind, or the adaptable airless tires from Michelin, even the ember mug that heats your coffee just right. Like, I'm on board with those. Then Time narrowed it down to their top 10 gadgets for 2017, and at number one, drum roll please, the Nintendo Switch. And at number two, the iPhone 10. And let's give some love to number three, the Microsoft Surface Laptop. And if we go down to number nine, guess what? The Apple Watch Series 3 with LTE. And really, that's a product I'm now 100% behind. If you're someone who works out or has an active lifestyle, they finally made an Apple Watch with Watch OS 4 worth getting for me after all these years. Now, we posted a standalone reaction to the HomePod delay to early 2018. You can look for it if you haven't seen it already. But one product that is still expected to make its December 2017 timeframe, Apple's iMac Pro. Tell me you didn't forget about this powerhouse that is really not your mother's iMac. Now you can always count on developers to dig deep into the code before we see anything for ourselves. And Stephen Trown Smith, Jonathan Levin, and Gil Herm Rambo uncovered a lot before the iPhone X's release. They've done the same for the iMac Pro. Now get this, the new iMac Pro will reportedly include an A10 processor with 512 megs of RAM that will run its own variant of iOS called Bridge OS. Full functionality of the A10 chip isn't known yet, but Gilherm Rambo posted confirmation that it will have support for Hey Siri functionality, and it could possibly work even with the iMac Pro turned off. Now the iMac Pro looks amazing, it still doesn't have an official release date, but it also has an amazing price starting at $4,999. Like I said, not your mama's iMac. All right, more iPhone future stories, even if plenty of you people are still waiting to get their iPhone 10. According to Fast Company, Apple is leaning heavily towards choosing Intel's 5G modems for future iPhones and are already working with Intel on the upcoming tech. Discussions with Qualcomm are described as limited, but they have superior modem performance that's been tested. Now, Apple and Qualcomm, they're in an ugly back and forth legal battle right now, so it's not like they're just gonna kiss and make up anytime soon. The report says, Qualcomm's 5G modems offer more specialized features for carriers, but many of those features won't be adopted by the carriers, and they believe Intel's hardware will be enough for future devices. And also check this out, a Digitimes report says Apple is working toward mass production of thinner and brighter micro LED displays to be used in future Apple products, and you know what, they should be. They have all the benefits that OLED displays do over LCD, but can be even thinner, brighter, and more energy efficient than OLEDs. Now, the top candidate to get these screens first would most likely be a future Apple Watch. And Apple also recently opened up their visitor center for the first time to public on its new Apple campus, dubbed Apple Park. So if you're in town, go check it out, but we'll be working to get out there on our own. And in the Apple executive whoops of the week, CEO Tim Cook tweeted out a congratulatory message to Australia for passing its same-sex marriage vote. The only problem, Cook tweeted out an emoji of the New Zealand flag instead of the Australian flag. Come on, Tim, that's a bad apple. <coughs> now, he replaced it shortly after everyone called him out, and Tim, it's so obvious, come on, everyone knows that the Australian flag features the large Commonwealth star because the star is a symbol of Australia, and the New Zealand flag has just four five-pointed stars in red with a white outline, while Australia has four seven-pointed stars and one five-pointed star. Duh. And I know this because I just use this amazing tool on the internet called Google. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. To everyone celebrating Thanksgiving, enjoy the time with your loved ones and people that matter. You can also forward your amazing stuffing or like cranberry sauce recipes. I love that. Send them to me by email, theapplebite at cnet.com, or to me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.